guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tara, in case you're new here. And today I want to sit down and have an open, honest, and raw conversation about the influencer industry. It's like a really weird thing that didn't exist. I would say even like five years ago, it wasn't nearly what it looks like right now. And there's so many questions and assumptions from you know people out there that are so curious about what goes on and how it all works. And I've always been super real and honest with my audience and you guys. And I thought this could be a really fun video to do. I've seen some other influencers sit down and be very honest about this world and I was inspired and I think this could be really fun. So I recently asked on my Instagram for some of your assumptions of the influencer industry and influencers in general. So I am going to look through them and we are going to dive in and get as honest as we can here. So that's gonna be today's video and we'll just, <laughs> we're gonna get right into it. Okay, first one, you rarely buy your own clothing. I wanna say this one is an accurate assumption and this doesn't necessarily go for everyone in the field, but I will say a lot of my clothing is sent to me, which I'm so grateful for. It's like the craziest thing. So whenever I do end up buying myself something, I, I don't really feel that guilty about it because I very rarely shop with my own money. It's the weirdest thing in the world, but it's definitely one of the biggest perks. I, I, it's awesome. Okay, moving on. They are lazy and don't want to get a real job. <sighs> okay, so I wanna say this is not an accurate assumption. This is not a career you could really be lazy in. Um, and if, I mean, you can be lazy in any career, but then it's just not gonna get you very far. If you wanna build an audience and a platform, you have to work your ass off. There's definitely lazy people out there and that goes for any field, I want to say. And for any job, you can slack a little bit and then your boss is going to tell you, hey, this is not working. And that's the same thing with, with YouTube. If you don't post for a while, people are going to pick up on that and they're going to see that you're lazy and then your views are going to go down. It's, you know, there's not like there's no repercussions of being lazy in your job. Just because like social media isn't a traditional regular doctor teacher job. It's, it doesn't mean it's not a real job. It absolutely is. I work my ass off and it, it's so, so upsetting when people say to me that it's not a real job because it absolutely is. It's a lot more work than people give credit for. Okay, so complete opposite. This I would say is an absolute Yes, this is an accurate assumption. I balance so many different platforms and creating content for all these different platforms that are all trying to be somewhat unique from each other. It's it's just a constant, it's a it's a constant. You don't stop. Like even if you go on vacation, you are taking pictures for Instagram, which helps boost your engagement, which brands like to see. You film it for YouTube. You don't actually make that much money from YouTube, but mostly from sponsorships. So that's that's an interesting assumption. It's actually that's I would say kind of true, but kind of not true. For a long time, I would have agreed with this. Like I would have said yes, 100%. But I have discovered this year that if you are posting very, very consistently and getting consistent views, the money will be there from YouTube itself. Like I think I'm almost making, almost, almost, almost making the same with AdSense that I am with my sponsorships. Usually sponsorships, you do make more money and it's a big chunk of money rather than just the views you know, building. But people that, that get millions and millions of views are making bank, like guaranteed. They never use the stuff they are gifted. <sighs> okay, this can't, I, I cannot speak for everyone. Obviously we know that and please keep that in mind uh, for all of these answers. Everything could be different depending on the person. I will answer from my own point of view. Obviously it's my own video. <laughs> okay, so. For myself personally, I receive a lot of PR, like a lot from all different kinds of brands. And this is through my management and different agencies. I don't usually have involvement with the brand directly. I honestly receive more than I could ever use, which is why whenever people come over, I'm always like, please take whatever you want. I do giveaways. I try to you know, give it to people that will use it more than I can because there's just no possible way for me to even get around to trying it all. And I'm so grateful for it. I, I think it's so cool that brands want me to try their products. It just, I'm just one person and it's it's impossible to get around to trying all of it. They have so much more free time and have off every weekend and holiday. Okay, so this goes kind of back to something we talked about a little bit earlier. No, that is such a not accurate at all. Um, weekends and holidays, <laughs> no chance. We don't have weekends, we don't have holidays, we don't have set days off. Obviously we have the flexibility. Ah! We have the flexibility to take off whenever we want to take off. Like I could take off today, I could take off tomorrow, I could take off the entire week right now and not have to report to anybody. But that's not gonna do anything for my career, you know? There's there's no weekends. Oh, this has been this way the whole time, no. 
no. That's actually one of the points where I kind of envy people that have a regular nine to five because you get those weekends and you have a certain time you get to work and a certain time you leave work versus you're always working. I'm not gonna get back into that, but that is absolutely not an accurate assumption at all. Especially like the holidays, I'm thinking, you know, Christmas time is a vlogmas. I vlog every single day and I edit every single day a video. Like the, the holidays are my busiest time. <laughs> a lot of them are just in it for the money. I can't really speak to if this is an accurate assumption because I think it really varies in the industry. It's, it's kind of a hard thing to touch on because why wouldn't you get into a certain career to make money at it? You know, like you don't just go to work every day and be like, ah, I don't need to get paid this week. So I think it's, it's okay to want to be in a job that makes you money. At the same time, it shouldn't be what it's all about. For me, I when I started, I, I wasn't making any money, like none at all from YouTube for a while. I did it purely for fun, but obviously nowadays everyone knows the money that can come along with this. So it's a little different nowadays, I guess. You make over six figures. Um, okay, well, I can only answer this for myself and I know a lot of other influencers I, I know I make over six figures and a lot of influencers make over seven. Um, and I know some of them make five, you know, like it's, it totally varies depending on the person and their engagement and their views and their following. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, it's not an inaccurate assumption. I do make over six figures, but this isn't for everyone. It's not a very general statement. Y'all make so much money, but never address it. <sighs> I don't know. Um, I can't say whether or not this is an accurate assumption. This is just kind of a weird one to answer because in most fields, you don't, nobody asks like, how much money do you make? I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing to talk about. It's private, so I don't know why, you know, influencers are expected to give out their exact numbers of like, I make this and this and this. Like, I don't know, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I don't, I don't like that. They drag things out for content, like a story in multiple vids when just one can do. Um, I would say, at least for myself, I know this is accurate. <laughs> Very fair assumption, I have done it, I've done it multiple times. I have a full series of videos on one specific topic. Granted, like they all happened at different times, so they couldn't have just been one video. But I've done it for TikTok where something could be one video and I made it five. <laughs> it's, it's strategy. You know, like people get mad at the clickbait title sometimes, but it's like, that's what, if you look at old school media, you know, magazines and newspapers, think of like the titles and the big headlines, usually a little bit dramatic, right? It's, it's all strategy to like bring in viewers, which is what people want. Magazines, books, whatever. That's why like book covers or like thumbnails, it's all the same thing. You you have to try to bring in as many people as you can because that's what you're trying to do. So when people get mad, I'm just kind of like, do you get mad at magazines though? I don't know, that's just my own opinion though. They come off way nicer online than they actually are in person. Well, I'm really sad that that's your assumption. That is sad. I would say sometimes true, sometimes not true. I know there are some people that are significantly worse in person. I have met a couple that seem so fun and bubbly online and then you meet them and they're just like so rude. And I I wanna say that like, that doesn't necessarily mean they're a rude person or not as nice as they seem from their videos. They could be shy in person. They could just be having a bad day. You don't really know what's going on in someone's life. So unless you know them personally, I try not to judge. You guys are fake AF. Again, sad. Uh, I mean, some are, some aren't. That's just the world. And I think that goes for people that aren't even influencers. Just anyone in the world could be like super fake or super nice. You know, you got a mix of people in the world. We're all different. We're all just trying to do our thing. You would be really upset if you had to go back to a nine to five job. Yeah, I'd probably be pretty sad about it. I don't know. I think there are different chapters in life. If this ends and I end up wanting to go into that kind of world, then I think that would be cool and then be something that I wanted and something that I would be interested in, in trying out. Do I see that happening for myself? Honestly, no. I've just always been the person that will always find a way to work for myself. I've done it for, you know, all of my, my life to my 25 years of life. I've been working for myself since I was 16 and I plan on continuing doing that. You get tired of being online all the time. Absolutely, oh my God. Um, this is accurate as fudge. Sometimes it's tiring. Sometimes I want to delete all of my social media. I'm so jealous of like my friends that don't do this that get to just take social media breaks and like delete Instagram for a week and Twitter and all of the platforms and stop looking at the news for a week and just like be. I would love that. To sum it up, the answer is yes. I get tired of being online all the time. I love it, I love what I do. I don't want it to seem like me saying I get tired of it. It means I don't love it. 
I think everyone gets tired of their job sometimes and mine is one that you don't really get to turn off. So, but that's okay. You don't truly understand what it is to leave your home to go to a job slash career, no hate. Personally for me, I do not. I never worked a nine to five before this because I started working for myself at 16. So I just never, I never have one of those jobs. But I'm sure some influencers absolutely understand what that's like. And I kind of want to put that back onto you guys and maybe start a conversation in the comments. For those of you that do work a job where you have to go leave your house every day, I want to know if you would rather work at home the way that I do. And I ask that because people make it sound like it's so dreamy and amazing and you can work in your pajamas. And yes, you can do all of those things. You can sleep in, you can do whatever you want. But it is so much lonelier. I would love an office environment where there are people and life around me. I'm, I am alone a lot and get really lonely and having to keep yourself on a schedule can be really tough sometimes. There are pros and cons to literally everything. Certain influencers require brands to pay them X amount of money for brand deals. I think all influencers do that. In this industry, it's really easy to get taken advantage of. I'm very, very grateful to have the management team that I do. They're so amazing. And really how brand deals work is they look at your views, your followers, your engagement, and then from there, they will come up with a rate that your average views should be going for. So yes, definitely 100%. There is always an X amount of money to be paid per video. Influencers don't ever think that they would have such an impact on others. I wanna say for me at least this is accurate. It's hard for me to actually wrap my head around the fact that there are people out there that genuinely care what I say and do. It's something that I, I can't really wrap my head around or comprehend. It just, I feel like I'm just like a regular person living at home, but this whole online version of me has all of these people that watch. It, it's so wild. Honestly, the craziest and coolest thing is when people DM me saying that they went to Trader Joe's to go get the specific milk that I talk about, or they got this, or they watched this because of me. Like, it's just so cool the impact that I can have on people's lives. And sometimes people DM me telling me how much I've affected them and made their life better. And it's, I, I just genuinely can't believe it. I just feel like a regular person, but I'm, I'm so grateful that I get to, you know, have a positive impact in some of your lives. It's, I, I just genuinely don't believe it. <laughs> I feel like I don't, I don't know how or why, but I'm, I'm so grateful. I think it's so cool. A lot of y'all are well off, but pretend to care about prices of things to stay relatable. I would say this is probably kind of accurate, but at the same time, I don't think we, I don't think people necessarily pretend like maybe some people do, but I like to check prices. I, I could, probably afford whatever it is that I'm looking at, but I I don't know, you have to have a budget and you have to be smart with your money. It doesn't, just because you have a whole bunch of money doesn't mean you can go spend thousands of thousands of dollars a day. I still look at the prices of everything and I, I genuinely do care. I don't pretend to care about how much something is. I don't wanna blow my money on stupid shit, you know? So I definitely still care and I definitely still check the prices of things. And I do think this would go for a lot of other people as well. You'll take any brand deal regardless of the quality of product. So I saw a lot of assumptions like this. I would say no, I've turned down a ton of brand deals. Actually, I turned down, I think three today. I just was doing my emails and I, I turned down like a lot of money to be completely honest. Uh, I turned down Ooh, this is uncomfy for me, but I just wanna be transparent. Today, I turned down $30,000 worth of brand deals. So I, I gotta say no, I don't think that's accurate. I think sometimes there could be a brand deal that comes in that's a crap ton of money and sometimes you're tempted. Um, but if you really don't stand for the product or the messaging, then I would not do it. Or if it feels spammy, like if the ask is too high of the brand, then I just, I say no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna blast them with sponsored content that I don't genuinely, genuinely use. Anxious about the volatility in your income? I guess it would make sense to be a little anxious about it, but I'm very grateful for my dad. I've talked about this a million times. He handles my finances and I am really setting myself up where if this all ends tomorrow, I will be okay. You know, I don't expect this to last forever. I, I know this is not a, a career that is like one that is very stable, which is why you gotta work at it and like just bust your bust your ass while you can, you know? I, I also think it's unfair to only put that on influencers. You know, you look at what happened this year in the world, no one could have expected the pandemic. And I mean, the number of people unemployed with regular jobs probably thought that their income was gonna be stable and the online industries are booming right now. So, you know, it, I think it goes both ways. So I think that's just 
a common thing that you should worry about your income. Uh, doesn't matter what your job is, I think that you gotta be prepared. Some influencers don't like each other but too afraid to admit it. I mean, I guess, yeah, but I don't think it's an, an influencer thing. I think that's more so a people thing, you know? You're in class with someone, you don't necessarily like every single person in your class. It doesn't matter if you're scared or not, you're not gonna just <laughs> go up to them and be like, you know, I don't like you. You're not gonna like everyone in this world and not everyone's gonna like you, and that's just how life is. I don't think you just <laughs> dead ass you to go up to someone and be like, by the way, I don't like you. I don't think that influencers need to, you know, publicly blast people and be like, ah, I don't like that influencer, no, 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 not for me. Nah, no. Okay, well, that was kind of fun. That wasn't as scary as I thought. Yeah, the, this was a very different video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it was really fun to react and answer your assumptions here. I Let me know in the comments if you learned anything new or if you knew all of this already. And let me know if you are an influencer and let me know your thoughts on these answers and if you have any other answers that are different than mine because I would love, love, love to know. But that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. See you guys next week with my next main channel video and I also have my vlog channel in case you didn't know. We post three times a week over there. So if you're looking for content to distract yourself from the state of the world, got you covered. I love you guys so, so much and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.